Part 4, The Plexus Understanding plexus is a bit less obvious than people or places, but no less important. The plexus refers to the complex of networks that connects the people to the places. In this text, we focus mainly on transport networks, but plexus also includes other infrastructures such as communication and information networks, as well as social networks. Still, transport networks is a broad topic that includes street-level issues as well as the various ways that we might configure or evaluate the street networks that surround them. It also involves the various modes that run on these streets and through these networks as well as some of the fundamentals related to how we measure and understand these modes. Much of this section on the plexus represents the mobility piece of the accessibility story, but it encompasses much more than what we conventionally call mobility. The plexus is the third building block to truly understanding accessibility. Chapter 5. Queuing. Access depends on travel time, and the travel time depends on the queuing process. In simple terms, we are either traveling unaffected by the movement of others, which engineers call free flow, or we are slowed by others, which we call queuing, either directly due to interactions such as congestion, or indirectly because of controls to manage those interactions, like traffic signals. In free flow, the traveler or customer can choose her own speed without imposing her choice on other nearby travelers. She can choose her own time and receive immediate service from some server, the toll plaza, the empty road. This is directly analogous to the wait at a cash register in the supermarket, the waiter in a restaurant, the ATM, the website for booking a flight, the teller at the bank, the food counter in the cafeteria, and many others. There are peaks of demand that human preferences generate. We want to work during the day and have to work at the same time as our supply chain, customers, and coworkers. We all want to be at the pool during the brilliant summer day. We prefer the fashionably cool restaurant or the coffee shop right next to the big office building. Queues emerge not only when demand exceeds the provided supply, but also when the provided supply changes. The most visible example is when there is a physical change in capacity when traveling along a road, such as climbing a hill, seeing two lanes merge into one, or even one lane diverging into two. But the supply can also change dynamically. Think about an historic staff toll plaza. Not all the toll booth lanes are staffed all the time. If supply is roughly in sync with demand, the lines are short. If supply far exceeds demand, there are no lines, but when supply falls short of demand, queues get longer. Unfortunately for the customer, no supplier can afford to provide so many counters or so much space in the transport system that travelers always encounter free flow conditions. The supplier wants to offer a certain kind of service, offering a particular speed or waiting time until service starts, but without having too much unused space, empty seats in the bus or train, or underemployed staff, which are costs without revenue. Furthermore, providing extra capacity encourages the users to arrive at the peak time, which makes the peaking problem worse over the longer term. Elsewhere, we discuss the issue of induced demand. To make matters worse in daily practice, the capacity of serving stations varies randomly around a mean for a variety of reasons. Weather, lighting conditions, the experience of drivers, skill level of the person serving, and random crashes in computer networks. There are two main queuing processes. One is due to an extended period of more arrivals than the server can handle, which is called deterministic queuing, and occurs due to the peaking of travel. The other is due to random bunching of arrivals or random server times, and that is called stochastic queuing, where stochastic is a fancy word for random. These are discussed in turn. Applications for queuing include traffic signals where it is important to platoon vehicles to try to ensure they arrive when the traffic light is green, and ramp metering to smooth the flow of traffic entering the freeway. Incidents tend to cause queues and decrease capacity. 5.1. Deterministic queues. Deterministic queuing occurs when total number of arrivals exceeds the capacity of the system for an extended period of time. Deterministic is the first of the two types of queuing processes. It can be best understood by an example. A highway can serve 1,800 vehicles per hour per lane, cars at a two-second following distance. In that hour, 2,000 vehicles arrive. At the end of the first hour, there will be a standing queue 200 cars long. If in the next hour only 1,600 cars arrive, the queue will be fully discharged at the end of the second hour. In two hours, 3,600 cars arrived and 3,600 were served. At the end of the second hour, there will be a standing queue zero vehicles long. If the arrival rate never dropped below the server rate, the queue would grow forever. Figure 5.2 plots the cumulative arrival and cumulative departure curves. The delay is the area in between these curves. The average delay is 200 vehicle hours divided by 3,600 vehicles times 3,600 seconds per hour. 
which equals 200 seconds per vehicle, 3.33 minutes per vehicle. This average is much less than the longest delay, the end of hour one, which is 400 seconds, or 6.67 minutes. The first and last vehicles have no delay. 5.2, stochastic cues. Stochastic cues occur even though total demand is less than the system capacity because of short-term fluctuations in demand or capacity. While deterministic cues occur when demand exceeds server capacity over an extended period, stochastic cues emerge in many transport situations. A group leaving a room having to wait at the door, as only one or two people can physically walk through it at any moment in time, or a funeral procession occupying both lanes of a road but traveling at a slow speed. A system that works well with a uniform number of arrivals, one car exactly every two seconds, sees queues form when it gets four cars in one second, even if it gets no cars for the next seven seconds, and thus has the same overall arrival rate. Deterministic queues occur when arrivals exceed the capacity of the service. In a sense, stochastic queuing is just the appearance of many short deterministic queues that appear randomly rather than for an extended period. Utilization rate rho is the ratio of arrivals at the back of the line per unit time lambda to departures from the front of the line mu rho equals lambda over mu. Crucial for the lived experience as well as for the planner or manager is that the waiting time in queues escalates to very high numbers when the degree of saturation reaches 80 to 85 percent of the available capacity. The figure above shows the explosion for the mathematically simplest to capture queue one server with demand and supply following an exponential distribution of arrival and service times. In the notation of the field, an MM1Q. The right side of this graph dramatically overstates what really happens in traffic, since it produces higher delay than a deterministic queue would, given demand cannot exceed supply forever. The left side is more realistic than the zero delay estimated by a deterministic queue when arrivals are less than the server rate. In practice, delay is estimated by models that combine these two features accounting for both stochastic queuing when supply exceeds demand and deterministic queuing when demand exceeds supply for a period of time. Still, this pattern of delay rising steeply with capacity utilization holds across all systems of queues with any randomness at all. 5.3 Platooning When you cannot go faster than the car in front of you and you cannot pass them but want to, you might feel frustrated. The speed of the driver at the front of this group of cars, which engineers evoking military organizations call a platoon, imposes his or her speed on the others. While this may seem inefficient from your perspective, joining the platoon may be to your advantage. Traffic lights allocate access to a scarce resource, the conflict point at intersections. When possible, traffic engineers coordinate traffic signals so that if you are driving the recommended speed, you make a series of green lights. This is called a green wave. So if you are in a platoon of vehicles arriving at an intersection, you are more likely to get a green light. This increases capacity utilization and exploits economies of density. Green waves can be established for bicycle or pedestrian facilities as well. While signals help coordinate drivers, there are other techniques that can be used as well. Signs sometimes tell drivers what speed the signals are timed for, say 30 miles per hour or 48 kilometers per hour, so they know that if they speed, they will then get stopped. Electronic variable message signs could be posted to advise drivers what speed to travel to ensure they make a green light. 5.4 Incidents Cars kill 1.3 million people globally per year in an ongoing human tragedy that is too often accepted as commonplace. The average American has a 1 in 113 chance of dying in a car crash and a 1 in 672 from a pedestrian incident. And the average driver will file a crash insurance claim once every 18 years. Property damage crashes are more frequent, 10 million per year in the U.S., than injury crashes, 2 million, many of which lead to temporary or permanent disabilities, or fatalities, 37,500. For those in crashes, it disrupts your day, if not your life, making you late, if not late. It also has a spillover effect, disrupting traffic for many others. About half of congestion is non-recurring due to incidents of various kinds, of which crashes are the most common. So reducing crashes not only saves lives, it reduces traffic problems. The crash can be thought of as reducing the capacity of the road and because it was unexpected, not reducing the demand. So as we saw with queuing, the load factor and thus the expected queue length will increase. Sometimes crashes close roads entirely for a time, resulting in a queue growing without end, at least until travelers do divert to alternative routes. That of course requires information, which is in short supply for unexpected incidents. 
5.5, just in time. Inventory, the storage of goods before they are used or sold, is a deadweight loss. Storing inventory cuts both ways. While it can increase reliability, it can be dangerous to the economics of firms. On the one hand, if you are a manufacturer, holding an inventory of inputs can ensure the production line operates smoothly, and an inventory of outputs ensures customers can get what they want when they need it. On the other hand, holding an inventory of poorly manufactured inputs can result in a lot of rework or the need to cancel production, while holding an inventory of unsold goods can be a huge cost if customer preferences change. Instead of storing inputs, just-in-time production brings them to the production line immediately before they are used. Rather than a month of inputs, there might only be a day's worth or a few hours. This ensures if there is an upstream manufacturing problem, it can be identified immediately and the supplier contacted. It reduces costs and improves quality. But just-in-time production requires a just-in-time logistics system. Trucks and trains steadily and reliably bringing goods from suppliers to customers with a minimum of delay. This can occur with proximity, suppliers located adjacent to their customers, or a fast and direct network. While proximity works well if there is a single supplier for the customer, it does not serve broad markets well. A factory can be adjacent to one or two customers, it cannot be adjacent to dozens because reliance on proximity reduces choice in the marketplace and makes the system more vulnerable. On the other side, getting outputs to final markets should also be done as quickly as possible. Holding a six-month inventory of last year's model is not going to work well for goods that turn over frequently. Customers, too, are used to getting what they want when they want it, through services like UPS, shown in Figure 5.6. While pizza delivery has long been just in time, that has now been extended to a wide range of goods that promise not merely overnight delivery, but same day, and for a premium, same hour delivery. When it is faster to order something for delivery than getting it yourself, the nature of sales changes markedly. In effect, a manufacturing production process is a deterministic queue, with an arrival rate just equal to the departure rate. This can be achieved by storing inputs, cars, upstream of the manufacturing process and inventory, or having inputs arrive as needed. The access of commercial producers to their suppliers in a reliable way is thus critical for modern manufacturing, and inventory is an expensive substitute for network reliability.